thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and providing some very, very cool PCBs. These are the upgraded forms of my Melty Brain board, uh, complete with power distribution, voltage regulator, and now an upgraded Teensy 4.0. It's a little bit better and more importantly, still available with the old Teensy 3.2 that I used in the last board. Uh, is no longer in production. So we needed to move on and do something different. Other than that, it's pretty similar to the last one, but actually also has the telemetry pin on board this time, which is going to be, hopefully, a big upgrade. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So you've seen the title and thumbnail of this video and you know what it is we're going to be building right now. And you might be thinking, what, what why? Will that work? Ah, uh, well, one question at a time. Yes, we are doing a dual vertical spinner melty brain. This is going to be the most ridiculous robot I have ever built in my entire life. And I'm very, very excited. Why is because I've already done a melty brain, a dual spinner melty brain at that. And that was a horizontal melty brain. But there was kind of two big problems with it. First is a limited weapon size just by the nature of not having the robot be a meter long meant that the weapons were capped at a certain size and still to kind of allow the robot to fit everything else in the center of it. This meant that when we went up against other horizontals, they always outreached us because the weapon was only had a reach of about 100 millimeters and I've built ant weights that have more reach than that. This practically means that going up against horizontals, they always outreached us. And if weapon heights weren't aligned exactly, which I couldn't do because I had no adjustability in the height of my weapon, they just sniped the pulleys constantly. And that is a real pain to try and fix, especially at an event. The second reason here is kind of more the bigger one. It is a balance issue. Every time the skids on the melty brain touched the ground out by where the weapons were, because they were that far out, it put a lot of drag on the spin and wildly changed the heading of the melty brain. There was also some thoughts amongst the community who watched these videos that potentially spinning the weapons and having the weapons be out of sync with each other was causing micro out of balance moments in the melting and leading to a kind of more erratic melting behavior. Well, we can fix both of those by taking those horizontals and sticking them vertical because now the mass is at the same point regardless of where they are. So there might still be micro fluctuations, but they're going to be a lot, lot smaller than the horizontal ones that we were potentially seeing earlier. And also if somebody wants to hit me, they now have to hit all steel, all weapon, all the time. So now we know what it is and why it is. The final question is, will that even work? Uh, I, I am at the beginning of this build process, just uh, as you are at this point in time. I have no idea what is about to happen, but let's make something happen, starting with the chassis. In the horizontal version of the Melty and the non-spinner version of the Melty, the chassis was entirely HDPE for weight reasons. The top and bottom plates are six mil, and then there are standoffs in the middle that are four and a half mil. However, I want to upgrade and change this because as you can see from this version, uh, the HDPE here is the only thing holding these weapon teeth on and was the same when the spinner was on it as well. But yeah, this has caused bending and warping and he did not survive very well when it was hitting things at high speeds. I mean, it probably would last another event, but I want something a little bit more rigid. So, we have some Hardox. These are Hardox puzzle pieces that fit together and allow me to put this thing uh, together in such a way. I mean, this is not everything, obviously. Uh, we are going, we are still missing some pieces here, but we have a Hardox jigsaw puzzle, which allows me to kind of jigsaw together the basic frame for the Melty Brain. There is going to be weapons off these faces and drive wheels off these faces. It's going to be fairly small, as you can see, but actually slightly taller, or at least the chassis is taller than the last version. Uh, this chassis has a lot of room to play and bounce up and down. The, the new version of the chassis is going to be taller and squatter so that it still manages to actually fit 
everything together. Now, next thing we're gonna need is to uh, join this all together. So uh, let's, let's, let's give this a shot, shall we? That is much better. Uh, although it did warp just a little bit in the joining process. Uh, I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this. It rocks just ever so slightly. And I think that was just the heat of getting this all to fuse together. And I've tried to bend it back a little bit, but it is obviously a welded hard ox frame. Uh, so it's not going anywhere, basically. I think we'll be able to live with this. It's warped kind of in this way, which means that the weapons will be slightly slanted, but that does mean they'll raise off the ground ever so slightly, and probably that will actually help here. So to finish this off, we actually need to see and see some parts to make a base and the rest of the walls. So again, this robot is very jigsaw puzzly. We effectively jigsaw puzzle these HDPE pieces together and then onto the robot they get, or onto the hard ox. They get bolted in in a couple of places and then the base plate literally just locks in all of these tabs that are down the bottom down here. I won't do this quite yet because it is quite a tight fit currently and I kind of want to paint this chassis and stuff a little bit too. But this is how all of this is going to go. Now, one of these sides, this side here, holds big old brushless motors for our YOLO drive for our Melty Brain, and the other side holds all the componentry for the weapons. Speaking of, we are gonna do a little bit of robot recycling, and we're going to nab the pulley and belt system out of any are you okay to run this weapon system. Now, it's gonna be very difficult for me to show you this easily, but the distances between the hole spacing for our weapon and our motor down here are at the exact spacing that we need to use Annie's old belts. So we're not gonna be using Annie's weapons though. Annie's weapons are far, far too large for this particular robot. Right, so let's get this chassis painted and then work on some electronics. So our PCB here deals with a lot of the wiring for us. So I literally plug a battery connector into here and then power connectors out to each of my ESCs into here. And all of that actually gets provided power by this switch. And yes, there is another one it's supposed to go in here which will solder in in just half a second. Then we have a five volt regulator out here. Yes, these are a commercial little unit five volt regulator, mostly because these things are bulletproof. I do have the skill to SMD my own, but uh, that gets a little bit annoying and sometimes you get dodgy parts and you get things explode or fail and then pass 12 volts or larger directly to your micro, which is what happened in one of the versions of the Melty. So I'm just using a commercial one for the time being. But you can also see we've got a bunch of tiny components here. So there's resistors here for the LED. There is a resistor here to do the telemetry pin. And then we've got some other smaller connections. And I think these ones should be okay, but the resistors I wanna get in before I populate everything else because they're gonna be quite fiddly to get in and having big honking uh, connectors on the, in the way is gonna be a problem as we're trying to get a soldering iron in here. Mm. Right, so that's our board most of the way assembled. We have plugs for the ESC, including telemetry. We have the five volt in, we have the chip in, we have the power distribution in minus the switch, but we don't have the LED or the receiver plug in yet. And that's because I want to get the wiring sorted out for this once we have the rest of the chassis built, which means it's time to talk about weapons. So let's talk about weapons. As you can see, I got a ton of different options cut. There are different thicknesses and I've got discs in a double tooth and bars in a single tooth because I got these cut before I had fully finished the design and I wanted to give myself some flexibility 
for the final build. However, I think I'm gonna have to run these particular ones. These are a 12 mil thick single tooth design and I need to run these because the wheel motors that I'm going to be using in this build are ever so slightly thicker than the ones I used in the previous Melty Brain and that means that the weapons need to stick out just that little bit further to clear them and make sure that the weapons engage before the wheels hit. So some of these, like these six mil thick ones, would mean that the wheels would hit before the weapon and we don't want that. So we're gonna have to go with these. But uh, the laser cutter that cut these for me was a little bit inaccurate uh, as far as laser cutting I have seen goes. So we're gonna need to balance these. And the easiest way to do that is to bolt them to a hub and use any as a balancing jig. So we're literally just gonna spin them up and wherever points down that when they stop, we're gonna file them. Okay, that was a joke. We're gonna angle grinder them instead. So after I ground them down and got them mostly balanced, I also covered them in a coat of paint so that they match. Now with the paint that I put on the actual metal base, uh, so this thing is gonna look ostentatious uh, which is gonna be a hilarious, I personally think. But with that, we need to actually get going on assembling all of this because the next thing to do will be to get this together. All right, barring, I think, some specific bolts to get everything together, this is about what's going in here. It's a lot of stuff, uh, including we're actually gonna run the weapons on 1806s. I think I mentioned that already, uh, belt drive off of Annie's pulleys. Uh, weapon is going to be run on 41, uh, sorry, drive is going to be run on 4108s. Technically, it's the weapon. Uh, it is effectively the weapon in this particular case. Uh, all of this stuff gets bolted together. It's probably going to be easiest to throw all the motors in here first. Uh, although, I will probably need to pull it back apart again later to get the switch in because the switch will sit up the top here somewhere. But I do want to put everything together see how all of the electronics pack down in, and then I will decide uh, how long the switch cable needs to be and stuff. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is utterly ridiculous. Now, uh, before we move on too much, yes, it does look like the wheels are sticking further out than everything else. However, I checked this in CAD and the wheels are about 12 mil in off the weapon teeth at the very edge of the radius. So we should be okay on that one. And if I need to, I can buff these weapons out just a little bit more just to get them further out than the wheels. And also these wheels are TPU and polyurethane. So, oh, polyethylene, polyurethane. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They should be able to take a hit. No worries at all. The only minor problem that I'm having right now is if we have a look in here, first of all, I've got all of this wiring tucked in here, which uh, needs to be cut down and resoldered because there's far, far, far too much of that. But the actual brain board here was designed to fit between these HDPE uprights, and it does do that. It does fit in there. Unfortunately, the steel is actually inside here. So I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that, but it sits down at the bottom 
at a lean. So what I'm thinking is I'm probably gonna end up running the drive ESCs right along the base of the robot and then have the brain board on top of those to buff that up to the top of where the steel sits and then have everything work like that. And I think that will actually do the job pretty much. It's gonna be a creative packing job. This robot is not very big at all. The entire thing sits inside, I think it's a... It's about 170 mil circumference. My calipers will not do tooth to tooth on the weapons. However, as you can see, they do easily do tooth to or wheel to wheel. So the actual weapon teeth are spinning out much further Again, about 160 mil as compared to about 137 mil for the wheels. And even if we go edge to edge of those, that's only about 150. So again, there is a little bit of uh, clearance here where the weapons should hit something before the wheels do. The big thing here I wanna check now is weight because we are uh, I basically at a point where I can do that because I can throw all of the electronics on top of this uh, and throw the battery on and see how we are going. Oh, ha! we are underweight, underweight by 200 grams. That's really cool. So there's a couple of things I want to do then here because there's a couple of things that are worrying me just a little bit. First of all, I'm going to increase the pulley size on the weapon while this currently works. Uh, Actually, this one's not too bad. I think it's the other side then. One of them has a little bit of slip in it, so I'm thinking increasing both pulleys will just fix that issue. Yeah, this one here, I can get it to slip fairly easily and even spin the weapon in the other direction. So something here didn't quite line up properly, so there's a decent amount of slack in the belt there, so I'll just change these Pull these over and that will work totally fine because we want these weapons spinning together exactly the same. So that is actually going to be it for this video. We have the chassis basically together. I now know it's underweight. It's 1.1 kilos, which means I've actually got 200 grams to play with. Heavier weapons for version 2 probably. Well, if this thing performs at all well enough. But uh, I am going to leave this on a cliffhanger. I need to edit this video. I also probably need to put about an hour into tweaking the code for the brain because I am using a different chip this time. So there's some small tweaks and adjustments. But also, as I mentioned earlier, I do not have anywhere safe in my house to spin this thing up. So this first spin up for this will be at ARC's next meet which is just around the corner so if you really really want to see this thing spin up much like i do right now uh subscribe to the channel and check it out because there will be a fight report for this next week effectively at this point uh all going according to plan that is now i am also probably uh going to take a second beta with me because i expect this to explode somehow i just I'm not sure what the physics is gonna do when I try and spin up both these weapons and then melty at the same time. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna take a second beetle and we're gonna fight a second beetle and this all in one go because yeah, I'm expecting random explosions. Speaking of, I'm actually gonna call this robot RUD, which is an acronym standing for Rapid Unexpected Disassembly, because again, I'm kind of expecting that to be the case. Uh, yeah, so that's it. If you want to see this thing uh, fight, check it out next week and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous.